Hey everyone, and thanks for checking out our video on the use of UAVs. Hopefully I can show you how these little remotely operated vehicles can be used in this field for your own work, as well as to help represent data in an engaging way. There are many uses for drones in the field of hydrology. First, they allow access to areas that we wouldn't normally be able to reach, such as above river systems like you can see here, which helps us gain some insight into the morphology of a site. You can imagine how when standing on the shore, we might not be able to visualize the full extent of the riverbank, but it's fairly simple with a rudimentary drone. Second, drones allow us to gain new perspective by viewing an area from above. Here in this video, we can see a river flowing through about 100 hectares of farmland, but we can also identify low-lying regions where water is pooling on the surface. This can really help you get a sense of the full extent of the site very quickly as well as help to reveal the big picture. Additionally, we can identify features that we may have missed on the ground, such as this channel flowing along the toe of a dike, and again, give new perspective to areas that we couldn't normally access. Here in this clip, we can see the extent of shallow flooding that has inundated this area. Again, something we can't possibly appreciate from the surface. We can also use drones to look at coastal erosion rates, sediment deposition, seepage faces, and many other features that we couldn't normally access. Their relative affordability and ease of use makes them a must-have for any hydrologist to help visualize your environment. Now, videos like these and varying perspectives aren't the only use for UAVs. We can also use them to reveal what we can't see with a simple camera, although these setups can be a bit more complex than what we've shown here. Our lab is currently utilizing a DJI Matrice 300 RTK system for advanced hydrologic and hydrogeologic work. This drone has many more features and is much larger, uh, which makes it a bit more challenging to use, but it enables us to gather some pretty neat data. It has built-in satellite geopositioning and a 15-kilometer transmission range. It also has almost an hour of flight time on a single charge and can operate in some fairly poor conditions such as rain or snow, making it incredibly versatile. And more than just the built-in RGB camera that the little drones have, the Matrice 300 can handle larger payloads up to 2.7 kilograms. Here in this video, I'm attaching one such payload now, our DJI H20T, which has some pretty impressive camera specs, as well as a thermal imaging sensor, which allows us to see temperature details at a scale impossible to get with on-the-ground sensors. Is Big Boy ready to see the sights? Yeah, Big Boy's ready. So once we get to our destination, we can use thermal imaging to easily identify features like groundwater springs by the contrast in water temperature flowing into this river. As you can see in the right image, it might be difficult and time consuming to identify the spring on the ground and log the data with temperature sensors, but in the air we can spot it quickly and easily. And here on the right, we might not be able to tell that this is an area with cooler water that certain fish might be attracted to, but with a thermal camera, we can plainly see the plume of groundwater entering the river. So the thermal camera can really help us visualize water features in a completely new light. But that isn't the only payload this drone can utilize. We can also use the drone to survey large land areas quickly and accurately. For this task, we use a DJI Zenmuse L1 LiDAR camera mounted to the same Matrice 300 drone. The L1 can allow us to map land surface with a reported 5 cm and 10 cm vertical and horizontal accuracy respectively. With this setup, we were able to map a 1 km squared area in just under 30 minutes. It's incredibly easy to use. You simply need to plan a flight route that covers your study area with the parameters you desire and hit the play button to start your survey. The drone does the rest. 
So here we can see point cloud data being created on the right by reflecting hundreds of thousands of laser beams off the surface. The lasers are able to see through things like tree canopy and long grass to give insight into the ground surface elevation beneath. We can also see features like water elevation and bank angle and use the data to track things like erosion and sediment deposition simply and accurately. Prior to the advent of drone mounted LIDAR, data acquisition like this would have been an expensive and arduous task performed by either a fixed wing aircraft, helicopter, or taking thousands of survey points on the ground. Now with this setup, if we wanted to, we could fly this same route every month and monitor landform changes much more frequently. It's really an incredible tool for any site. Okay, so once we collect the point cloud data from the LiDAR camera, we can process it using a software called DJI Terra. It's fairly straightforward. All we have to do is select the folder where the data is stored, uh, adjust some of these settings on the side here, such as point cloud density uh, and the coordinate system, select the output file type, and click Start Processing. Now this proprietary software can take a bit of time to process depending on the computer, uh, but the reconstruction makes it really simple to create detailed 3D maps in real color as the photos and laser points are combined together. So you can see when I zoom in here, there's a lot of fine detail, which makes it simple to see features like these dikes, uh, riverbanks, and low-lying areas where water might pool. The camera also records reflectivity data, which might be useful for tracking things like snowpack extent. We can also show a color gradient, which represents ground elevation, which might be useful when looking at sediment deposition, coastal erosion, stream elevation, the extent of flood events, or changes in morphology, uh, which could have an impact on ground and surface water flow. And of course, we can click anywhere on the map to show elevation details or take accurate measurements of distances, areas, or volumes for any points that we want. Now, aside from making 3D images, we can also use DJI Terra, the point cloud, and the photos to create high-resolution 2D maps. So each of these white circles represents a photo taken during the survey. And when we construct the map, we see extremely fine detail can be revealed. So in this example here, we can see the change in land cover following the removal of these dikes and a sluice gate, and sediment deposition in low-lying areas is clearly visible when comparing the before and after maps. And of course, all of the data can be examined in DJI Terra to check for vertical and horizontal accuracy. As you can see here, we had a vertical accuracy of about six centimeters throughout the survey, as well as exported out of the software as various file types to allow for additional processing in your favorite GIS software. Well, hopefully now you can see how drones can revolutionize the field of hydrology. And thanks for watching.